All right, let's move on to our next game. All right, our handheld system. This is the Milton Bradley Microvision, and it looks like this is a licensed game for the, the first one we've seen on the handheld. This is Star Trek Phaser Strike. Is it really Star Trek? Um, anything we've seen with Star Trek or Star Wars hasn't been official. They've uh, been a bootleg, uh, or, or they weren't getting the rights for it. Let's see, Star Trek Phaser Strike, Battle Cl Yes, so this is our first licensed Star Trek game, I think. It's gotta be. The, it, 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 the other Star Trek games we had, weren't they weren't legit. Um, they were just someone pr programmed for a computer. Yeah, there we go, trademarked. This is our first Star Trek licensed game. And it was for the handheld. The first handheld that you could have interchangeable cartridges. All right, so for the manual, yeah, there you go. Phaser Strike by Milton Bradley. So it, it shows you after you turn the system on, you have a different speed to select your speed. You press targets and then press go to start the game. The first target appears. You try to target your phaser cannon and then shoot things with using a phaser like in Star Trek. That's awesome. How it delivers on the microvision, though, we will see. It's 1979. We are playing the Milton Bradley microvision. It is not game over. This uh, emulator is so funky, but so amazing that someone did this. Okay, so if you look on the far side over here, that is the uh, Milton Bradley Microvision with the cartridge. The whole cartridge is the front, which has a screen and has the buttons. And then the uh, if you look at the bottom, we have a, a little dial we can twist back and forth. And there it is me twisting the dial back and forth. And so what we do is we follow the instructions because every cartridge had their own buttons. <laughs> it's not just the the game. It, it is it is the screen, the the logo, and the uh, and the and the button. So here we go. We pick uh, what size we want. So we would say uh, we'll stick with that. And then speed looks like we can do slow or fast at, or or C. We'll go ahead and try it fast. And then for targets, looks like one target. So then we say go, and then let's see how this works. Okay, so it looks like this is not using the little uh, dial at the bottom. It looks like all it's doing is you have a, a single shot at the bottom. <laughs> and I missed the one target that I said I was going to get. But you're, you're just picking um, one of the buttons to push on the, on the control pad of whether you're going to shoot at a 45 degree angle on one side or the other or the center. All right, so let's try that again. Let's do, yeah, one target, and we'll try slow this time. And then size looks like it'll make the target bigger for us. All right, here we go. So let's get, push go, and then, yes, we have one target, so it looks like, yeah, a lot easier to hit. There you go. <laughs> and it goes across the screen, and you make the shot happen. Or if you're skilled enough, you can shoot it off at an angle like that. There you go. Very simple for the time, but wow. This is probably the best handheld uh, version uh, of anything we played on the Microvision. That is awesome. Okay, so for the time, this is, I'd say, one of the best handhelds you could play. It is a shooter for a handheld, and we didn't go through all the game modes. You could have had different targets at different speeds, but they give you so many options. It's fantastic. This is um, uh, a solid, oh, I don't know if I want to go five because... Yeah, we're going to go five because of all the handhelds. For, this is the first handheld released this year that you had interchangeable cartridges. And it's a handheld that has different game modes with shooting. So of all the handhelds from 79, this would have been the, the best of the best. So five stars for Star Trek Phaser Strike, definitely. And from the chat, KC Club Kirby says, The internet has literally no information about the development of Space Launcher. Thanks for looking it up. But it was by Nintendo. They have to have something that uh, released in the arcades by it, right? All right, so let's move on to our next game. We are chugging ahead, finishing up the rest of the games from 1979. We're almost to 1980, playing all the games from 1970. And this is Star Wars for the Commodore Pet. And it looks like this is uh, not an official game. Yes, it's an unlicensed simulation game. So we don't have any, we only have one screenshot. Let's boot up our Commodore pet and see what happens. So for Star War or Star Wars, the Commodore pet may have the wrong model of uh, version for it. So if you see, we just booted it up and we got something on the screen, but I don't know if it's going to, oh, it does work. Let's see. 
wow, I don't believe this. It, it, it's working and it's being controlled like an action game. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. This is the best looking Commodore pet game we've ever seen. There is no sound, but the way this is controlling is uh, the number pad on the keyboard. They use two, four, six, and eight. And you can uh, use those at, for your sights. And then, can I shoot? What's my shot? Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Okay, so I don't know my action button yet, but I know how to do the controls for... I just hope it don't hit the break key. Th this is programmed entirely in machine language. You can see they're using like AS ASCII controls for this. Oh, and I actually, I even have diagonal too. That's awesome. All right, now I gotta find my shot. How do I shoot the, shoot the button? Now, usually it is one. Oh, I think I got it. Okay, oh, no, that was one coming at me. So the, there is no sound, but the look of the game and how well it's playing is is awesome now i need to know if there is we don't, we don't have a manual so i don't know the button for fire but there is a button for fire let's see if i can find the i'm just trying the different obvious ones that would have been on the commodore pet and it looks like we picked the right model which is kind of cool usually we don't get one uh, that comes up that fast but it, we have lots of displays at the bottom that are telling us about um you know our fuel level and then yeah it says the laser's ready I can't believe the normal, oh, I found it, yes. Okay, so it's A. Of course, to fire your laser, you use A. All right, so let's see if we can get one in our sights and blow them up. Oh, it locked, but wait, it gave me a game over. I think I ran out of time. I got shot way too much. Okay, let's try it again. All right, so let me start up again. I don't believe it, yes, it works. Wow, this is, of all the games in the Commodore Pet, I can't believe this. I, I really wanna see if this is 1979. The uh, originality and making an action game when everything else is usually text-based. <laughs> and I can shoot them from far away. That's cool. All right, so from the chat, KC Club Kirby has been looking up the Space Launcher game we played earlier. And yeah, the only info they're able to find is it was made by Nintendo, R&D 1, in 1979. So there is a website that lists developers... And if you look up R&D 1 and find out, who develop, you, can, you can sometimes look up just who was on the team of Nintendo's R&D 1 in 1979. It is, uh, I, I gotta find the, the, the website, but I'll uh, I'll be sure to put that in either the description or another, another place to look that up, because I'd like to know for Space Launcher. All right, so for Star Wars on the Commodore Pet, so amazing for what they were able to accomplish for this system. This is very much four and a half stars for Star Wars. The best Commodore pet looking game that we could ever see. I'm amazed. All right, let's move on to our next game. It is a handheld. This one is a, a handheld we'd be used to seeing at the time. There is no interchangeable cartridges. Once you got this game, that's the only one you had. This one is Star Wars Electronic Battle Command by, I'm gonna say, oh, by Kenner. All right, so let's take a look at the artwork. So here we go, Star Wars Electronic Battle Command game, a game of hyperspace dogfights. One to four players. That'd be the first four player handheld game we've ever seen. Uh, if you played the handheld Mattel games like football, they have two players where you, you know, switch your, uh, you pass the handheld off to someone else. But it looks like the game is what they call a tabletop, where you're not necessarily holding in your hand, you're putting on a table and then pushing the buttons. But you can see by the display, it is just lit up by single lights. And uh, from the chat, Casey Club Kirby goes, Star Wars Battleship? Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's what it is. Uh, do we have any instructions? Here we go, yeah, so, um, so you have different modes, basic, intermediate, and advanced, LED scanner alert and combat signal, and if it was four player, there must be something of how could four people play this? Because if we played Battleship, the original one, you had two, for two players, you had one person on either side. But I don't see how you could play four people on this. Let's see if it says anything about um, how to play or what it is. No, it's just mostly a advertising. Self contained microcomputer game. There you go. Shows you how old it is, which allows you to simulate all the exciting action and strategy of hyperspace combat. And this is an official licensed Star Wars game. I think this would be our very first licensed Star Wars game. Now, Star Wars came out in 77. There was plenty of Star Wars toys that came out, so you could consider this a Star Wars toy. But is this the very first licensed video game for Star Wars? 
I know that the action figures came out and they had uh, th- there was no other self contained. Uh, this is a handheld, obviously, and we've seen other Star Wars video games, but they were just homebrew, uh, made up themselves. All right, so it looks like from the chat, Casey Cloak Kirby saying, since you control your ship and you move and evade, it looks like it's not uh, a battle sh- uh, battleship game. It's just dodging uh, using the buttons. So there you go. There's the example of the handheld. You have uh, different ways you can move and evade, and it looks like it's showing you on the grid what to do and how. Uh, how would it be four players, though? It said it on the box. I don't know about that one. Okay, let's see if we get it to boot in an emulator. It is 1979 playing Star Wars Battle Command. Oh my gosh, it loaded. Does the game run though? Let's see if we can play something. All right, so it looks like uh, we have the different controls to move up, down, left, and right. Uh, so so basically the emulator is telling us of all the buttons that are on the handheld system, what I'll be translating it to uh, my, my system. And it looks like uh, if we want to play the... Let's play a basic game so we don't go nuts with this. <laughs> so here we go. It looks like uh, force units. Oh, a number of players. Uh, let's do... I love how it says force players. Uh, so basic game. We want to pl- try... Oh, intermediate game. How do we switch the number of players out? Let's see if we push... Okay, so it says... Oh, player number. Player number is... I see. Okay. So we want to do one player. And then if we're ready to play the game, let's play... Uh, I guess we hit basic again and see what happens. No? If I put push player number again, what happens? Oh, it raises it. There you go. So it does four player. I can choose between four different players on this. Okay, so... This is a handheld Star Wars game, possibly the very first licensed Star Wars video game. And the the reason we see this screen is because this is someone that took the handheld and they made it into a simulator. We actually have the simulator up and running. So I want to be able to go to the next one. So let's try if we do start turn. The uh, looks like it is enter. It works. Okay, here we go. So if you can see here, they give me a quadrant to go to, and then I have to uh, move. And we have sound effects in the background too. We have the music. I'd love to know if someone had this or played this in 1979. I played lots of handhelds uh, myself, but I haven't played this one, at least in in the wild. So, okay, it's looking for another move. So if I want to go, let's just do a, a, a fire. Because I'm supposed to do a maneuver and then go to the next one. So if we do fire, what happens? No? All right, let's try move. No, I'm not able to move. So what about the... Oh, left and right? And it has... Oh, I'm supposed to do start turn. That's right. So I do start turn. And yeah, it's 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 a it's trying to point out the quadrant of where it is and then fire it. So it is slightly overcomplicating it, but uh, for the time, that would be so cool to have a, a game with this much complexity. Uh, kind of the reason why Simon was popular as a handheld because it was very simple. This one is a lot more complicated. So if I had to pick between the two, because we've seen them both uh, from 1979, let's go ahead and give this one. Um, from from what we could base every other handheld that we've seen, let's go ahead and give this one a uh, three and a half star, which is slightly above average. Very novel and amazing to have, but just doesn't have. It's a little too complex for what you could uh, have in 1979. And yes, from the chat, Casey Club Kirby said it looks more complex than actual space combat. Yeah, I, I agree. 